While the cartels are outsmarting us, trafficking their deli fentanyl looks easy, it's effective. They're packing fentanyl in avocados, coconuts, car batteries, children's toys, wigs, coffee cans, putting backpacks on pigeons to fly it across the border. You name it. Cartels are trying it, and they are successfully flooding our country, flooding our streets. On Sunday at the Andra Day port of entry, U.S. Customs and Border Protection had its largest seizure in history at that port. They seized almost $1 million worth of fentanyl and methamphetamine from a 37-year-old woman driving a pickup truck. The woman was applying for admission into the U.S. from the port of Mexico when CBP officers noted irregularities in the gas tank. The officer searched the tank and found 46 packages of fentanyl pills and 30 packages of methamphetamine. The drugs were seized. The woman was arrested. Since October, more than 21 million fentanyl pills have been seized by the CBP. Retired DEA agent and Penlink LTD executive director of government relations, Derek Maltz, joins me. And Derek, the numbers that I just said are the ones we've seized are the ones we've caught. I mean, I mean, to, I mean, can you give me some sort of estimate? I mean, of all the fentanyl that's, that's rolling into this country, have any sort of sense of what percentage we're stopping? Well, if you talk to the experts, Greta, they say we seize about 10 percent. I don't know where they get that from, but it makes sense over the years, you know, consistent reporting on that. But just think about what DEA Administrator Milgram reported recently with the 57 million pills that they seized in the DEA and 13,000 pounds. CBP last year, they seized 14.7 thousand pounds. And then you look at it, it only takes two milligrams to kill. It's a deadly chemical weapon. It's being made in these dirty labs in Mexico. The cartels are working with China. They are operating with impunity. And that's why this week, when I testified in Congress, I called out the White House to declare this a national security public health emergency, and let's go after these cartels and make them feel the pain and be held accountable. We can't have American kids dying at historic levels and sit back and rely on the corrupt, soft-on-crime leaders in Mexico. AMLO already has his hugs for thugs, no bullets policies. We need to destroy the chemical processing labs that are killing our kids. Enough is enough. Let's stop talking. And Dan Crenshaw and Michael Waltz know how to go after the networks because they've done it in the military, you know, as decorated, you know, Green Beret and Navy SEAL, SEALs. They are experts and they know what it takes to defeat the adversary. So I'm all you know, in favor you know, of it. You know, Derek, you said in all the years we were in Vietnam, we, we know 58,000 Americans were killed about. That's 58,000 in probably 10 or 15 years. More than 100,000 people just last year from fentanyl, all of it coming from you know, China to, Me to Mexico. Uh, you know, it, it seems to me that Mexico is a failed state. Nobody wants to say it, but their police, so many police are on their take. In just three years, 38 journalists who dared to cover the cartel have been murdered by a um, cartel. 38 journalists. So I don't know who's brave enough to cover that. I mean, the numbers are staggering. We sent all this money to help protect the Ukrainians with their border, and we're, we're getting killed on our own border with this national security risk. And it's, I don't know, I, I, think, it's, I think it's actually going to take a member of Congress, Senator House, or a member of the White House, or a president, some family member, to die from fentanyl to finally realize, like, you know, maybe there's a problem that the one that the rest of us, because they've got the job to fix it. We can't. Right. So just think about the conviction, like last week, on Janeiro Garcia Luna, who was the FBI director equivalent in Mexico. He was taking multi-millions of dollars of bribes from Chapo Guzman, Sinaloa cartel. And basically, they have, the cartels have infiltrated the entire government, and they are controlling the government. So at what point does the White House say, we have to be more aggressive, we have to put greater demands on the Mexican government? Yes, we will offer assistance, we will provide training, but we need to take some technology and destroy those production labs. So, granted, this is but, something I, I want to But there has to be some there. will. But, 
But there has to be some will from our government. Yes. I mean, they've, you know, they've yes. got. I mean, they've got to want to do that. I mean, we have the capability. Look what we did in Colombia in the 90s exactly. when, when that when that country was around. You know, we were able to do that, and we've got so much attention in other places of the world. And we're. I mean, the, I mean, I, I think that the numbers are so staggering. 100,000 people a year dying from fentanyl. That is, it almost seems unbelievable. But the idea that we would let that many Americans die. I mean, we'll send in a show of force if there's a, if there's a if a single person is murdered, we'll get a SWAT team out there. But we've got 100,000 people getting killed by this drug, and, and, and all they're doing is talking about it. Right, Greta, in the history of America, let this sink in, there's never been a terrorist organization, not Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Hezbollah, combine all of them, that has killed this many Americans. So what the hell are we doing? By poison coming from China. And China's been doing this bombing campaign since over 10 years, since I was the head of the Special Operations Division. And one last thing. What we're also forgetting is China's role in the money laundering services now for the cartels. These Chinese kids picking up millions of dollars from the cartels and making sure that cartels get their money back. It's unbelievable and it's it's so obvious. And remember, State Department's definition for a terrorist organization, they must be foreign, they must be engaged in terrorist activity, and they must impact our national security. The drugs are just said two weeks ago. This is unprecedented, and the president and I are not going to accept it, and it's a huge threat on our national security. So what the hell are we waiting on? It's unbelievable. It's disgusting. I know. I, I, I don't want to hear one more member of Congress say, yeah, it's a problem, or the White House say, yeah, it's a problem. I don't want to hear one more hearing. I don't want to have one more hearing now. It's a waste of time. We all know what the problem is, and either they, you know, and they've just got to do something instead of talk about it. Derek, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.